In this episode, I had the pleasure of speaking with my good friend, Dr. Matt Delgado, owner of LifeSpring Chiropractic, one of, if not the top chiropractic practices here in the Austin area. In our conversation, we'll be discussing a variety of topics related to chiropractic care and overall health, including the common causes of stress, how seeing a therapist has changed Dr. Matt's life. He'll suggest some small changes you can make now to optimize your health. We'll chat about the benefits of preventative care versus sick care and how being healthy might be way less expensive than you might think. We'll also discuss why someone might seek chiropractic care. Finally, we'll hear about all the different symptoms LifeSpring Chiropractic treats. This one may shock you. Dr. Matt would also like to extend an offer to listeners of this podcast that are interested in giving LifeSpring a shot. So if you want to receive 20% off your first visit, click the link in the description and use the promo code PODCAST20. That's PODCAST20 for 20% off your first visit to LifeSpring Chiropractic. Now let's hear from one of Austin's top chiropractors. Dr. Matt's in the house. Dr. Matt, a.k.a. I, I have to do it. <laughs> Caffeinated Cairo. I thought you were to say Matt's El Cairo. Matt's, the, well, that was the next one. Okay. <laughs> Matt's El Cairo, the Caffeinated Cairo. How are we doing? Good. Is this weather um, taking you back to Seattle? It's the reason I moved away from Seattle. Nine months out of the year is just like this. It's gray, cloudy, rainy. This is brutal. I mean, it's Austin. It was 90 degrees two days ago. So I heard. I just got back in town. I guess it was two days ago, but I got back late. So it's been like this since I got back. You're in Guatemala? Yes. Is that something you want to talk about? Just like Sure. I feel like that. I've never been to, I don't think I've ever been to South America. Central. Central, Central America. America. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, that shows my <laughs> So many people said that. Too. What was the What was the trip for? I uh, just fun. I hadn't been on an interna- international trip. If I can talk, there we go. In, I guess three years. Whoa, since COVID. Okay. And I just like experiencing new cultures, yeah. new country, food. It's interesting because it's if uh, you tell that to travel people, they get it immediately. They're like, "Oh, that's so cool." Yeah. They don't ask why. They're like. Oh, that's awesome. What do you enjoy about it or what you do while you were there was your favorite part. But you can tell some of the people that aren't as big into travel or international will say, why'd you go there? Yeah. Or what is there? Was there a reason for your trip? Like, yeah, for fun. I think traveling, I mean, I've got two kids now. So yeah. traveling isn't quite as easy, but that's one thing. I mean, I feel like COVID, yeah, just throwing a wrench in the ability to travel or people's willingness to just get on a plane and go to a different country. You didn't know the restrictions. The It was just like kind of a mess, but yeah. the fact that you have the ability to do that is huge. Totally. Yeah. And it's fun. I enjoy doing it. I think it's good to like zoom out of the, the cog, the wheel that we uh, develop. Routine is good. I love routine but yeah. to zoom out and kind of reevaluate and just to have time to relax and to step away from everything, even a life that feels good to come back to was really nice just like a good reset on life how was the coffee most important question incredible i brought a bunch back with me i actually made a bunch of coffee friends too while i was there some of the coffee shop owners one of them in antigua guatemala it's like a spanish colonial city Mm -hmm. beautiful city i actually went to his coffee shop in the morning when he opened up and helped him call it dial in the espresso oh and it's because now you have experience because now i have experience Said so in Spanish, there's a more proper word, I think, for it. They say to recalibrate okay. it because depending on like the temperature and the humidity, it changes the coffee and how old it is too. So every day before a coffee shop opens, they recalibrate it so it tastes just right. So all the things behind the scenes you don't see, you don't but see. it was cool now that I have enough experience of like home barista and coffee and I can share my process and show them picture of the machine that I use yeah. and we're talking about coffee. So it was really cool just to make new friends through a uh, shared interest. Like yeah. Coffee. So, um, you know, at the beginning of the episode when I called you, uh, Matt, uh, the caffeinated Cairo, um, one of the cool things I've learned about you over the years, you have this passion for chiropractic, but the passion for coffee is there too. And you've kind of like found this way to merge and we always, you know, Thank you to spokesman. You uh, made sure that we were, uh, our thirst was quenched. Our coffee thirst was quenched mm-hmm. uh, this morning. But it's cool that you kind of have those two 
different passions that you've merged and go into the, these Central American or South American countries. You've been to Colombia, yeah, right? Yeah, um, those are like the coffee meccas. Yeah, and it is so complex. Is I it, don't. I'm not sophisticated enough to understand it. It's almost like you know, if you go down the rabbit hole too far, sometimes it can feel like it's too much. So there's a balance there where I try not to. Yeah overdo it because it's a never ending hole. And I, it's funny, I joined a group on Facebook that has, I want to say 40,000 people in it from all over the world. And it's all about coffee. It's coffee lovers from Mm. all over the world. So it's cool when people bring up their either problems with, Hey, I can't figure this out, or I'm trying these beans or I'm like, I put one up there on the group when I was in Guatemala saying, Hey, I shared this really cool experience. I help, um, this new friend I made opened his coffee shop this morning and we were trying different yeah. beans and there's this cool process that I hadn't really uh, seen before with the beans and it's just fun to, uh, to get into it, but also maybe not too far. <laughs> yeah. Do you find when you travel to a country or w- whether it's out of state, cause you do travel a lot, I'm a little bit jealous, but companion pass i was able to convince you to get the companion pass it looks like you're putting that to good use yeah um do you feel that is like a stress reliever from work just the daily grind building a business is that like one of your escapes that's a really good question i'd say no for me what i what i um actually it can be i think it depends what i noticed this time when i was traveling in Guatemala was that a lot of the people there, a lot of the other foreigners that were there that I met, it was totally, almost everyone, it was their escape or they were between jobs yeah. or they were like miserable back home or they gap were going, year. yeah, gap year, yeah, or going through a divorce or yeah. something big in life had happened to get them to want to just live a little bit. And I, I think for me, it's more of like a, a process that I enjoy having of even if I feel good or feel like I don't need a vacation, I think one of the things that brings me the most joy is like um, stepping back out of my routine yeah. and a little bit of uncertainty. And there's some challenge to it too, to traveling. I felt at times challenged directionally or with the language. Yeah. I'm not fluent in Spanish, so sometimes I didn't know how to communicate something I wanted uh, sometimes I felt a little isolated. I was traveling solo yeah. and I didn't always have a good group of people around me. I, I did a lot, but sometimes it was also a little bit lonely. So the I think our problems go with us wherever we travel. But for me, it's more of an enjoyment to experience a new culture, yeah. new food, new people. What is the food like in Guatemala? Um, it is... Not, I guess it's a similar to, I'd say more similar to South America than what, like Colombia, than what I found in Mexico. Mexico's okay. got a little more heat, a little more spice to yeah. it. I'd say it's like a milder version of that, but a lot of, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Uh, Pepian was their staple dish, like a stew. Okay. But other than that, they didn't really have any staples. It was just like a meat and, um, not very many vegetables like meat, yeah. rice, beans type of thing. Yeah, I don't feel like I, – I love going around, whether it's Austin or when I'm in a, a new city, trying to find kind of the hole-in-the-wall spots and trying different cuisines. I don't think I've come across a Guatemalan restaurant or Guatemalan-inspired yeah, restaurant. I, I don't think I had either until I went there. I've been to like a Pupusa place, which is from Honduras, I believe. Okay. Yeah, but I hadn't been – I hadn't had any Guatemalan food. So, so now you're back. Now I'm back. Back to work. You're yeah. running, running light spring chiropractic. Mm-hmm. I've seen it since the baby. I've I've been there from the beginning. Yeah. When you were in a another uh, chiropractor's office, kind of tucked away behind a curtain, um, was coming to you there, and then you've built this huge chiropractic practice here. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you, which I feel like this is a good segue, since we were just talking about like your stress reliever or, or maybe traveling isn't a stress reliever. You bring your stresses with you. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of misconceptions about chiropractic. There's a lot of bold thoughts about or bold views of, of chiropractic, but street speaking of like stress and everyone has stress in their lives, whether it's work, uh, 
you know, family life, whatever. Um, what are some of the things that you run into day to day? Like people come into your office that you see like stress having such a big impact. How, how is it impacting the people that come into your office hmm. day in, day out? Yeah, great question. I think it's, first off, I think it's the, well, they call it the silent killer. And the reason they call stress the silent killer is because it tends to creep in. It's not always so pronounced or, or profound. And I think the pace in which we live life, and this is a difference, I think, and I grew up in a small town, and it's it's different than in a, you know, in a bigger city, we live life so quick, or we tend to live life so quick, then sometimes these stressors, we just don't let ourselves feel, or we're moving so quick, we just don't really notice mm-hmm. it kind of creeping in. So I think day to day, some of the main stressors that I see clinically showing up in people, their job, you know, I get to hear a lot of people talk about their job and how it stresses them out. I think in a physical sense, like their posture, like if they're sitting at a desk all day on a computer or all day in meetings or ergonomics. And then I think um, emotionally too, or mentally, like their jobs, many times they don't feel fulfilled in, or they feel like yeah. their boss isn't managing them well. And, you know, it's not my job per se to coach them through that, but I can still just hear them and listen to them. And then um, I think... You know, there's a, I guess, an easy kind of all-encompassing uh, thing we talk about in chiropractic is the three T's, mm. thoughts, traumas, and toxins. So those are the main stressors, thoughts, uh, traumas. We just talked about like a micro trauma, which could be lack of movement. Um, and then toxins is what we put into our body that can create inflammation yeah. and tight muscles and tense joints. I think what's hard these days is that they're so... Information overload is yeah. having a lot of information is great. Information overload is a real thing. I go through it all the time and I'm curious to see how you kind of take the approach when someone comes in, like what's that? You don't just want to throw everything at them. Like, Hey, you need to go buy a stand up desk and then, you know, stretch and, and get you know, like get adjustments. This There's like so many things they can be doing. So like, how do you approach that in your, practice for someone that comes in and you could tell like stress is playing a huge role in maybe the, the pain or discomfort that they're having or headaches or, or whatever that looks like. Yeah. That's a great question. And I think if anyone listening to this, if there's anything you listen to in this entire podcast, this is the spot to hear. Let's hear and it. first is, um, you need an unbiased opinion when it comes to your health. Well, all of us. I, I do too. That's why I have my own team. People are surprised sometimes that I see a chiropractor as well. I see a functional medicine doctor, whoever. I have my team. I have my people because I have biases in my own life and I have blind spots. I don't necessarily notice all the things going on even in my own life. So as a guide to ask the right questions and help figure out what is even causing the things that you're experiencing symptom-wise? And that's so important. I don't think people see the value in that, but I'd say the most valuable thing we can get is a really good practitioner who listens, who asks the right questions, and can help identify what's causing whatever discomfort in someone's life. And then I think that's half the piece is finding it. And then the strategy and the implementation is a whole nother story and the way I typically do it is slow and steady because what you just pointed out, sometimes it can feel overwhelming or there's so many things or if you overload people, it's too much. So I take it in steps. The first place I go personally is to remove any triggers that are causing more harm in someone's life. So we'll use an example the maybe average person that comes in sits eight hours a day at a desk and is on a computer. So the very first thing before I overload them or give them any exercises or anything is, well, let's remove the trigger that's creating most of your problems. And let's say one of them might be sitting for eight hours a day. So let's just have you take more breaks. Let's have you, and it's funny, um, a, I don't know if I could say it, I signed an NDA with it, but a big tech company that everybody uses yeah. paid me thousands of dollars to tell their employees, like 20,000 employees, this, to build them a toolbox for experiencing less pain. And it was so simple. Foundational things like take more breaks. You're giving it take more steps. I'm giving it to the people. Take more steps during the day and then get your ergonomics set up because it really does matter. Correct. And there's a lot of things people miss. I see in the background here you've got 
like a mat that you stand on for yep. a standing desk. That's one of the top missed things that people miss. So, well, you say, uh, you know, sitting at a desk for eight hours, but how about the 30 minute commute to the office that, yeah. you know, you're sitting in your car. And for me, um, I have a stand up desk, but as a, as a realtor, like I'm in the car a lot, driving a lot. And you, I find myself just my back, it kills my back. Yeah. Um, so, especially if you're finding yourself on a long commute, um, you know, if you work from home, then great. You don't have an excuse to, to not walk around and move because yeah, sitting, you just get so used to it and you don't realize that, oh, I was just sitting at my desk for two hours in that curved position. Yeah. <laughs> We're looking at our phone. I know you have that tech neck, uh, sign in your office because it's yeah. a real thing. Like yeah. we're constantly like this hunched over Yeah, and it's slowly yeah contributing to all the bigger problems and that's what creeps up on us usually are the slow things if it's like you get in a major car accident and your neck hurts right away you'll typically go and you'll see a chiropractor because it really hurts or if you go fall outside and or hurt your low back because you fell on it you tend to take quick action because it really hurts but it's actually probably 90 percent of the people that come into our office it's the opposite it's the slow creep in that has taken 20 to 30 years to fully set in. And then what seemingly comes out of nowhere, they enter into the office. And if you remember in my office, there's this straw that broke the camel's back as yeah. a visual that I use. And it's so profound because it's almost humorous, but it's so true. And it happens to all of us that we just don't notice it until it gets big enough. And then it feels like it came out of nowhere. And then usually where, and you've taught me this, where you feel the pain isn't, necessarily the cause or the source of the pain and that's that's where your job becomes it's almost a somewhat of a detective or totally. a scientist where you need to peel back all of the layers and you've told me before it was funny we were sitting down uh, getting coffee this was a couple months ago and you were just talking about some of the back pain that I've been experiencing and you, and you said you know sometimes you could even feel it in your shoulder and I was sitting there thinking like my shoulder hurts all the time. Um, now it could be because I was a, a baseball player and you know have some strain on it, but yeah. also the the fact that it could easily be related to what I'm doing with my lower back, my posture, all of that. Um, it's pretty eye opening, and that's a good reason to to come to someone like you. And and again, people like I said, people have misconceptions of, about chiropractors. Yeah. They, I know you've said. You know, people think chiropractors are quacks yeah. and, you know, some people stick to their guns on that. They might have gone to get an adjustment and it hurt them more. Um, and what do you say to that? The chiropractors are quacks. Yeah. The interesting part of that story is that term even came from the American Medical Association and it's well documented in... I think it was the 1980s. I'll have to look back at it, but the American Medical Association was taken to court and it made it all the way to the Supreme Court, actually, by chiropractors. And the chiropractors were suing the American Medical Association for conspiracy to disband the profession of chiropractic. And part of the way they implemented this way that they were trying to eradicate the profession of chiropractic was they were falsifying information. They were putting it in libraries and schools, and they were teaching in schools that these chiropractors were quacks, and they, they used that term. And it's amazing how it was like the game of telephone, right, yeah. that it can even, this game of telephone has lasted for years, and it was happening well before the 1980s, but it really didn't take action until then. And the AMA, the American Medical Association, was actually found guilty of it, so... It's documented that this has been a thing that chiropractors have had their backs against the wall since the inception of the profession. And yeah. I can't necessarily, I can speculate why my speculation would be the uh, competing, right? There were competition. And other than that, I can't really see a reason because when you look at some of the objective things, the, the proof is there, the evidence is there. So like if... Um, the efficacy or how you know how effective it is i mean it's well documented and if a profession's been around for 
over a hundred years, there's got to have some value to it. And if there's thousands and thousands around, which there is, there are in the U S there's got to have some value to it. Like when people ask me, do you believe in so and this, like, do you believe in acupuncture? Do you think it works? Yes. It's been around for thousands of years and there's thousands of practitioners. If they weren't helping people, they wouldn't be around. And I think this goes to what I was saying where you're kind of a detective because maybe for a specific person's injury, chiropractic might not be the best route. What I appreciate about knowing you over the years is that you have said to me several times, like, Hey, I think you should do this. And I usually, usually (laughs) take your advice um, more just because it's like, okay, it's a lot of things to to kind of take on or financial, like that has a, that plays a big role for a lot of people in the health decisions they make. Um, which we can get into that in a second because I know you'll go all day on that. Um, but like when you talk to me, hey, I've been going to this functional movement trainer. Um, you know, he will work on movements, uh, building strength in places that you probably wouldn't work on if you were just going to Lifetime Fitness and and working out on your own. Yeah. And I started doing that and started real- realizing like, ooh, I've got some glute muscles now yep. that I never felt before. Yeah. My wife likes poking them because, <laughs> you know, it's like, ooh, yeah. yeah. Um, but different things like that. Like I've yeah. tried for some of my injuries, I've got chronic back pain and it's something that I've kind of learned to, to deal with. Um, but yeah, not one. I mean, I've tried a lot of different things, but not every, it's not a one size fits all solution. Mm-hmm. Um, acupuncture might work for some people for, their ailment, yeah. um, but it might not work for everyone. So with chiropractic, again, what I was saying about you is when someone comes into you, you kind of give them the the reasoning why you think you will help. It's not just, hey, come in, we'll crack you and leave. Yeah, um, You like to educate. We've talked about this the way I run my business. I like to educate people so they truly understand what they're doing and you have the same approach. Yeah, I think you can use like a, I think a car analogy is coming to mind right now. Like if you got into a car wreck and your car was pretty messed up and pretty banged up, you might first take it to your mechanic that you trust. And your mechanic's going to look at it and say, you actually need a referral to a body shop as well because we don't work on the body of the car. And if I have never been in that situation, I just wouldn't know. But I'm going to trust my mechanic with that, that, oh, okay, maybe the body shop actually is the right place, or maybe they actually need to also send me to the windshield place to get the windshield address. Mm. And my version of that is like, sometimes, like I had someone this past week say, I don't know if you're the right person for this, but I have plantar fasciitis in my foot. And I said, well, usually a chiropractor probably wouldn't be, but we actually specialize in extremities. So this yeah. is my wheelhouse. And this is actually how I made my name in pro sports and working with pro athletes was through the foot. And she goes, really? So yeah, so we so we looked at that. But if I ever don't feel comfortable with something or like for certain people, it's a better fit in a new space, that's why the assessment is so important. Yeah, And I refer like a madman to people in town. And I think it's important to have a good network for, for me um, physical therapist is one of my top referrals, a personal trainer mm-hmm. does functional fitness, um, an acupuncturist, a massage therapist, um, nutritionist, like a functional nutritionist, functional medicine doctor, a therapist also. I refer to them a lot. Yeah. Um, that's an interesting one because you've, you've talked to me, you know, you've, you've straight up said to me, you've done – You've you've worked on the physical component, um, the chemical component. Was that considered like diet or food? Yeah, okay. well, everything we put in our body and in our environment. Sometimes in Austin, like mold is another one. Mm. Yeah. What's crazy with, with on the food thing? I didn't really know about. I know seed oils have become like a big buzzword recently, and. I was listening to Joe Rogan. They talked, you know, he had someone on that was talking about seed oils and this and that, and you should be consuming uh, extra virgin olive oil, avocado oil. And we had, we mostly consume that in our house. Yeah. But then I started looking at the label, the ingredients of like <laughs> everything that I've eaten my whole life. Yeah. And still eat. Yeah. 
Um, one example, there's in our in our office here, they've got a little snack thing, and they've got these things called popcorners. Uh-huh. It's like a popcorn Dorito looking thing. Oh no! And you would think just looking at it like looks healthy. Yeah. And like the first ingredient or one of the first couple ingredients is one of the seed oils. Yep. And those are like such a big contributor to inflammation. Um, what do you say or what can you recommend to someone who's trying to maybe, I mean, it's hard to cut that out, go cold turkey because like everything has it in it. So yep. what would you say to someone to just start being more conscious of that and maybe start removing those and see if that has an effect on the way they feel? Oh, that's a good question too. My own health journey, I think, really plays into how I would answer this. Over 10 years, I'd say 10 years ago is when I really started, probably 12 years ago actually, is when I first gave up dairy. And I was really, if I think back then, I was really hesitant to change anything because I was pretty attached to the way I was living and I enjoyed certain things and I didn't want to give them up. Mm. And then I remember my aunt, who's a naturopathic doctor, nudging me and saying, you should give up dairy like lactose intolerance runs in our family. And the stomach aches you're describing and the diarrhea that you have regularly, that's not normal. Like every week, probably three or four times a week, I had diarrhea. And I just thought, oh, it's it's fine. Like what you said, like, some, oh, I'll just deal with the back. I've gotten used to living with it. And I did. I got used to living with it for 23 years of my life and then I finally decided you know what I don't have to do this forever but why don't I just try it and I kind of just stepped my foot out into this new area and I felt amazing and the feeling of feeling amazing and profound changes in that was the driver to keep doing it so little by little over the next 12 years I've slowly changed things and I think a good way to start is to start slow I've worked with a ton of people over the years, thousands of people helping them with their health. And I've noticed that people that tend to change too much too quick, usually it doesn't last. Or even like the super fans of chiropractic immediately, I'm always like a little hesitant or to try to slow them down a little bit or just to stick to the plan to not do too much. Because if you do too much too quick, it could kind of overwhelm you and it doesn't always feel sustainable. So I think even little things like you mentioned, like maybe you give up, uh, it might be gluten or it might be dairy. And just for a period of time, even try it for a month, see how your body feels and let that be the thing to uh, influence you to want to change more is just how good you feel. That was going to be my next question was, was how long are those trial runs? Um, Mm -hmm. So you think like 30 days cut out one thing and just see how you feel 30 days should be just enough to scratch the surface for our which is amazing i think our expectations around health is if i stop something for a week it's going to make a profound change or if i start something for a week but think about working out like if you work out for a week you're not going to see any changes Mm -hmm. in your body you might feel a little bit better if you work out for a month you might notice just a little bit of like maybe muscle definition if that's what you're going for, a little bit of weight loss if that's what you're going for, but it really takes closer to three to six months to see more of a long-term change. Hmm. So I think anything we really commit to, and we don't have to be perfect doing it. I think yeah. that's where a lot of us get caught up is like, well, if I, have to, if I do this, I have to be perfect. Like, No, you don't. You don't have to be perfect. But I think if we can commit to something for like a three to six month period, that to me is really giving it a try. So even when I told you right to see that personal trainer when I recommended that, I yeah. think I probably said something along the lines of giving it six months to really yeah. see what shows up, like to have reasonable expectations with it. Yeah, I went for eight months and then he left. Raheem, yeah. yeah. Sorry to see you go. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was it. So, so the diet is a big component, the physical, and then you talked about um, emotional, mental. Mm-hmm. Um, and seeing a therapist, I've actually never been to a therapist before. Yeah. Um, I know there's a stigma about going to a therapist, but I've heard a lot and see, it seems like more people go to a therapist than you would know. They, people don't go around posting it on, on Instagram, you know, the way they would when they go to the gym. <laughs> but do you see it going to a therapist as working out your brain and your your the emotional side of your body, the way someone would go to the gym and work out their cardio or, or chest. 
Good question. Uh, I think there's also a shift happening where people are more, and I'm I'm still gathering data myself or like just watching what's happening. I'm not really sure how to put words to it, but I've, I've noticed a shift around mental health is it's not only more accepted, it's actually a lot more talked about than ever before and seeing more people. And I, I do notice still some hesitancy to maybe bring up like, oh, I see a therapist because it might be a sign of weakness. But I've been seeing one weekly for the last two years, just over two years. And I have no problem sharing that in a clinical setting because sometimes people feel like, oh, okay, if he's done it, he's seen good results. You know, I, I don't always give specifics, but just say it's it's been really something that's helped me a lot. And I think you'd really benefit from it as well. And then sometimes people are like, oh, I already have a good therapist and I've been seeing him also for mm-hmm. so. It's interesting when you start talking to people, a lot of people either have or do, uh, but I don't think it's for like kind of exercising the mind in that way. I think it's to uh, rewire the mind okay. and there's um, our brains, you know, the word trauma, and this is something that I'm not going to go too deep into this because I get like as a chiropractor, and this is from my understanding is my own experiences with it. And this is where I don't go into this realm with people other than talking about it and helping them connect to the right therapist. But trauma is what happens in our body, not to our body. So we can experience something that feels really big to us. That's trauma. It does not have to be like, you know, getting screamed at or yelled at or smacked or so. I don't know, wherever like or assaulted, like where our brains might think of, they call that like big trauma big T mm-hmm. trauma, but there's something that we call like little T trauma, which is even the style of parenting we received, or if it wasn't, wasn't enough or wasn't what we needed as kids, that's many times our bodies experience trauma. So if we're able to rewire some of those things and um, reshape kind of the way that we think or perceive the world or just have more awareness around some of these things, and we start to learn what emotions even in our, are in our body. It's really profound with what happens. We just to feel more. I think is a it's a blessing and a curse, mm-hmm. right? It's like the the beauty in it is. I think it makes life more colorful, and we start to see things that we may not have noticed before. And it can give life more meaning. And I think the flip side of that is it also feels painful. Feeling and being human sometimes really really sucks. And it can feel really, really painful. And, uh, you know, physical pain and emotional pain actually show up the same in the brain. So, and as humans, we're more driven to avoid pain even than seek pleasure. Most of us really live our lives to many times avoid pain. Yeah. So there's a flip side to everything. But I think if we're willing to go there, there's a huge and profound benefit that we can receive if we're open to receiving it. And that, that pain versus pleasure is always a, a tug of war, you totally. know, even with the example of cutting out dairy. If you're like, I love pizza, like I love putting cheese on my tacos, whatever. Yeah. And you're like, to me, the, the pleasure of that outweighs the diarrhea. Totally. Um, totally. And then, <laughs> you know, when you cut it out, yeah, then that's the pain of not being able to do it. But the pleasure might be I'm able to like live my life and not always be you know having diarrhea yeah and it it took me like for that example 24 years i mean if i was from an infant if i was counting those years you know 24 years to finally realize that the stomach aches weren't worth it i think i was avoiding the pain of not having the cheese and the gluten and yeah. things that would light my brain up with like a pleasure response immediately i was avoiding that initial reaction rather than thinking more about the long-term benefit of the damage change that would happen mm-hmm. if I did give it up. And to that, one of the things I mentioned was how damn expensive it is to be healthy. And I know, I'm already going to say what you're going to say back to Ooh. me. It's so damn hel- It's so damn expensive to be unhealthy. It's way more expensive to be sick. Yeah. Way more expensive. So how do you how does someone go about that balance? Because really the sick, it's like they don't act or they don't have to spend the money until they're sick, but the preventative care is, it's expensive. Like um, you guys don't take insurance in your office. Correct. 
and there's you have a reason why and yeah I think it would be helpful if you would share sure. why, because a lot of people would think, you know, some insurance plans give you, when I was a teacher, I remember I got like 20 chiropractic visits a year. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a reason that you don't yeah. take Ooh, insurance. This is good too. This is good. Cause yeah. why don't you take insurance? Yeah. Good question. I think if I could back up even for a second and just speak to the difference in, um, kind of so or a phrase to encompass this we all pay for our health the only you know choice we have in it is when when we pay for it we can choose to pay for it now or we can choose to pay for it later and if we pay for it now it's going to look a lot different than if we choose to wait and pay for it later it's kind of like a credit card you get this because you're the one to help me with the points thing you're mm-hmm. you're my credit card guy friend you got yeah. all the hacks on it well, imagine if you have like this really high interest rate on a credit card and you're putting everything on it and this delayed kind of gratification, right? Or, or instant gratification, I mean, that uh, you get maybe all these things you want now and you're maxing out this card. You're going to pay for it later and a lot more actually than what you're going to pay for now. But it feels good now to have all the nice shoes and all the clothes and all the, whatever the coffee machine, whatever mm-hmm. you want to put on this card. Our health is the same way. I don't think we see it as that, but it's a really good analogy. If we pay for it now, it doesn't always feel good, but it's so important to do. And it adds up over time in little ways. And our bodies are really smart and really adaptable. We can adapt to a lot. We can take a lot of stress in a lot of different areas and we can be all right. And medicine is really good at helping us to be less sick. Medicine will never make us healthy, but it's really, really good at prolonging our life and making us less sick. Hmm. But the quality of those years, that's a choice. That's totally a choice. So to bring that around into why we don't take insurance is I think the whole system is designed for sick care, largely. And the things that are covered are not necessarily what's most beneficial for our health the things that are covered and this is from a doctor's side of view you know from our view it's like the insurance company will say well we'll cover x y and z services but we won't cover these other services and you're saying well these other services are the things that i actually need and they're going to be good for my health so what we tend to do is we just go with the things that are covered because they're cheaper for now and um, some chiropractors do choose to take insurance, but for us, that's really hard because then we're governed by this system to really develop systems that are more geared toward what, you know, we have a choice then. And typically people choose what's going to pay me, not what's going to be best for you. So then you get back to, well, I've been to a chiropractor, but I didn't get any better. Well, a lot of times, and I'm going to go out on a limb here. I'm not saying always, and I might upset a few people, and that's okay. A lot of times, that experience was really geared around insurance. And believe it or not, it's those services where you were more of a number, and you were more seen to make money. And if you go to a cash-based practice that does not take insurance, we say cash-based, but I mean like any HSA, credit card, yeah. whatever, the results are usually profoundly different. Not always. And there's really good practitioners that do take insurance, but all of my practitioners that I use even, and I have insurance, but the only thing I use my insurance for is emergencies, Hmm. an ER visit. And then this other paradigm that I go into, I max out an HSA and I'll use that for all my things and all the things that I use, I pay out of pocket for myself also. I have good insurance that would cover a lot of different things that I use including my therapist, mm. like my therapist, out of pocket. But the results I've seen are amazing. I'm not willing to sacrifice that. So when someone goes to a chiropractor and they get an adjustment and then get other services and it's a chiropractor that takes insurance, though that chiropractor is usually billing the insurance company for all of those different things that are happening. Yes. Is that correct? Yep. And timing is a big thing, I guess, too. Because when you think of timing and frequency, what I mean by that is um, – Let's say that this person comes in and they they need three months worth of treatment to correct the last 20 years of buildup in their life. And 
some people think, oh, three months worth of treatment, and maybe it's around 20 visits in that time. And to some people, that may seem like, wow, that's a lot that you would recommend. Well, not really. For 20 years worth of buildup, that's actually really good mm -hmm. to get rid of it all in a three-month period. And then the insurance might say, though, you have 12 visits a year, so we're going to only cover 12 visits. So think of an analogy here would be if you're orthodontist recommended you need you know year worth of braces and you said well my insurance will cover six months worth of braces so i'm just going to put them on for six months and then i want to get them taken off and then you do that and then you tell your friends well the orthodontist that i went to was okay but it didn't really fully help my teeth and i still kind of have these crooked teeth mm -hmm. but that what they don't tell you was I was the one that chose to take them off early and his recommendation was actually double what I did and I just didn't do it because my insurance didn't cover it. Hmm. So this is from the doctor's side of like, come on, the patients aren't telling you the full story. Yeah, <laughs> wow. That's an interesting perspective because mm -hmm. you probably, yeah, you you see that all the time. I mean, you guys have, you've built a very successful chiropractic practice. Um, go on Google like million five-star reviews um and that's hard to do especially in a city like austin where i don't know is a, is the chiropractic market saturated in i feel like people would say real estate or real estate agents that's a saturated market um is chiropractic saturated in austin because i feel like there's just so much opportunity here it's a great place to be but you also have to you know stand out yeah Good question. It's very saturated and it's becoming more and more as Austin's growing and becoming a known city. And most chiropractors tend to own their own practice. So they want to start up in a city that's usually, you know, relatively health conscious and has good opportunity economically. And that's very, very much Austin. And it has nice weather. Hmm. And usually, not today because it's cloudy, but usually that's the case. So from old stats I heard when I was in school six years ago was San Diego was the top city in the world for chiropractors. There are more chiropractors in San Diego at that time than any other city. But if I checked back, I would probably guess that Austin is right up there pretty darn close with a city like San Diego because it's such an incredible city. So it's I've noticed, yes, much more. And I have a lot of you know people I know even are friends. That, and when I first moved here, I didn't know any chiropractors that I went to school with or that went to the same school as me. And there were some here, but it didn't seem like it was that mm. saturated. Now, even around my office, there's a bunch. Mm. There's a lot. Yeah. So how do you know as, as someone that is, whether they're in pain or they're, they're listening to this and they just think like, oh, well, maybe as a preventative care, I can add chiropractic to kind of my health repertoire yeah. uh, or health routine. Mm -hmm. um, how would someone know to come to LifeSpring versus go to one of the other ones that might take insurance, that might be cheaper. I, know, I mean, we don't need to get, you gave the the reasoning why not taking insurance is different. So you, you guys can make that decision on your own. Yeah. But why LifeSpring versus ABC chiropractor in Austin? Great question. I think if people are more looking for like short-term symptom relief, we can provide that. But that's not usually the best fit long term because they can find cheaper places to go to find a quick adjustment. Also, if they want, if they don't really want to understand what's going on in their body, they can go somewhere else, get in quicker and for cheaper. So that's probably a better fit for them. But the people for us, I'd say the ones that really want to make a difference in their own health, that are really committed to the process, developing a process around their health long term and that are I think curious too. I know it's a weird thing to say, but just like curious about health and open minded about ways they can improve because there's always, you know, things that we can incorporate in our life to improve. So I, a lot of who we see are people that are, you know, pretty open minded and that really are committed to their health and sometimes they're not sure if it's chiropractic or not and they'll trust us for you know, that first initial consult to see, is this something that can really help me out? And what, so someone coming into your office, like what are the most common, does someone have to be hurt to come into your office? What, what are some of the most common 
ailments or, or reasons why yeah. people come to your office initially because I would think it's like, oh, I got in a car accident or I fell running and hurt my hip or whatever. Yeah. Um, what are some reasons, some of the most common reasons and things you, you said you specialize in extremities? Like yeah. tell people what that means because yeah. maybe that might be the, the reason when they're listening to this that they say, oh, oh, he can help that. Maybe, yeah. maybe I'll give him a shot. Yeah, no, good question. And I think the main things tend to be, so I'll sidestep it just a second and I'll answer it. I just had, and you know me, I'm always changing my office. So I just had this new design that's going up on my walls and it says the body whispers before it screams. And then there's a few different examples of whispers that we can look out for. So I feel like this is totally relevant to mm. share with people because actually a lot of times people aren't even describing their problems when they're coming in as pain. It's more preliminary symptoms of irritation, we could even say, or discomfort, but mm. they're not always in a lot of pain. It's just like, it just feels off. It just feels wrong. And the discomfort can be in different areas. The most common sites that we see tend to be like low back, uh, neck, shoulder area. But some of the little whispers that we can look out for are knots in our muscles or tight muscles. So people in their middle back or their shoulders from sitting long periods will say, I have knots in my shoulders. Well, that's not normal. That's common, mm -hmm. but that's not normal. We don't have to live with that. We can live with that. And our body will adapt really well if we choose to, but we don't have to. Uh, feeling the need to foam roll three, four times a day. That's not normal. If our, especially around the low back, a lot of people will be like, ah, oh, like I, it just hurts. Or feeling the need to pop their back even, especially a couple times a day. Or sometimes, you know, I used to do it myself. So I get it. I used to do it. I didn't know what it was doing to me. I didn't, I didn't realize it was actually causing potentially a little more harm than good but it gave me like 15 minutes of relief. That mm -hmm. endorphin release felt really good, but it didn't change anything long-term. Uh, feeling uncomfortable on like a long road trip or like a like a plane ride, like, oh, my back, or I can't sit Planes for... kill me. <laughs> there we go. And my mother-in-law's bed. Well, not her bed, but the bed I sleep in at her house. Yeah. Torture. So there we go. So those are common things that I think people can look for in their lives currently that would be signs that there's a problem and we could absolutely help with those. And they usually stem back from the spine being in less than ideal health. And what we do is we'll add to bring some life back to it or bring some health back to it. We got to get the spine moving correctly. So segmentally, there are like think of different buttons. There's like 26 different buttons lined up. That's what the spine is. So we got to push the right buttons. We got to find the ones that aren't moving right. Mm. We get them moving better. And then sometimes some are moving too much from old accidents or injuries or car wrecks or over flexibility, a lot of females or yoga teachers. So we actually got to strengthen those mm. and not get them moving more. So there's a lot of strategy that goes into it, but those are some of the top areas or jaw also that we see. That's usually like TMJ issues, mm. something that stems from a problem in the upper neck, which people don't even realize. And then extremities you touched on, you know, like with, Pickleball in Austin is getting popular. So tennis elbow, plantar fasciitis, ankle problems. If you sprain an ankle and it's swollen, those are things that we commonly see. Also, not every office, but and same with knee. Uh, I just helped a woman recently prevent a knee surgery, which was really cool. Wow. And there's a guy on YouTube that I think we highlighted this on our YouTube channel, Life Spring Chiropractic on YouTube. Uh, I saved $40,000 and he flew in from New York. And I was like, dude, are you crazy? Why'd you fly in from New York to see me? He goes, well, I looked up everyone online. You seem like the best fit. And they quoted me 40 grand for the knee surgery. So I figured it'd be a lot cheaper than yeah. that. I'm like, that's actually really good logic. Yeah. Spend a few hundred bucks. Yeah. See if it works. Yeah. The, the YouTube channel to me is one of the things I think differentiates you. So I know I asked like why life spring and I think you did a really good job and, and just breaking down like the different areas you cover. So someone that has, whether it's headaches, I had a friend, he, he uh, sent me a message and he was like, that Mac guy, <laughs> is he actually good or is he just your friend? And I said, yes, hey. yes to both. Yeah. Um, good question. Also valid question. Cause yeah. there's a lot of not good ones out there too. A lot. Well, there's a lot of people that, um, promote you know from in this day of day, day and age where there's influencer marketing yeah it's like 
you don't you never know who truly is promoting something because they believe in it or yeah. who's promoting it because they're getting paid to do it. Yes. Um About. I send people to you, yes, because you're my friend, yeah. but B because I trust you with them and whether they see you, someone that comes to your officer calls into your to LifeSpring today might not see you. They might see one of the other chiropractors there, but you are super picky with who you bring on and making sure that they get the life spring experience, not just with Matt Delgado. And yeah. that's, you know, what, what I work toward in my business as well. Anyone that works with me, whether they work with me, Lindsay, or another agent on my team, um, that they're going to get the experience of working with our team. Totally. And that's what you've built is, is a team there. Um, so just touch quickly on the, on the YouTube channel. And I think it's a super helpful resource because yeah. anyone that has, you know, leg pain or foot pain, or, you know, you, you, I always laugh. I think about this when you adjusted, uh, Trent Brown's foot. Yeah. It was like the biggest foot I've ever seen. He's for people that don't know, he's a NFL lineman. I think he's the biggest lineman in the NFL too. He's like six foot nine. He's a monster. Yeah. And his foot was like, you know, I think size 18 is what he said. Insane. Yeah. Um, so that was a funny video, but yeah, if you go back and search some of Matt's videos, he has a big, uh, you know, the YouTube channel is a, the biggest library, I think, of chiropractic knowledge that you can get really anywhere um, because you show the steps that you take through a through an adjustment treating different symptoms. So someone that's like, my shoulder hurts, what would a chiropractor do? Go to like type in life stream chiropractic shoulder adjustment, and you'll see whether it's you or one of the other chiropractors walk through what that looks like and how you address that pain. And I think that's a super helpful resource for you. And one of the reasons, one of the things that differentiates you from other chiropractors in not only in Austin but in the whole country. Yeah. Because not many people have built what you've been able to to build. So um, also your now connection with a lot of ath pro athletes, college athletes. I don't know who you're able to you probably know, n no names, but people can go on your social media and, and YouTube and see that as well. But yeah, that's been a big thing and they better trust you because you know, these are guys that aren't going to let you touch them and then they can't play on Saturday. can't play yeah. on Sunday. Yeah. So that's, yeah. Yeah. And some of them are, you know, it's, it was intimidating in the beginning, not as much now. I've you can see enough, you've seen enough, but what a blessing and also like I have goosebumps saying this because like my inner child is so happy because to me that's really cool like I grew up watching all these pro athletes play mm. and from gold medal Olympic athletes to um, men's national team for soccer uh, MLS uh, NBA MLB and UT football is really common for me um, NFL it's been a dream it's been really fun to get to for me it's like to be able to test my skills at the highest level because I always find enjoyment in seeing well how do I fit in at like the highest level around and for me that's really satisfying and my brain needs that for me to feel fulfilled and I've found that for me to solve higher level problems I really like that if it feels too easy for me there's a little bit of friction in my life. I don't always, I don't like the, um, like if it's too easy, I, I need a little bit of a challenge. So yeah, it was, it's been fun to, to see some pro athletes. And that's cool. That's a cool way for you to break it down because following that challenge, um, I see that like I did, I'm by no means like a pioneer with real estate, TikTok or, or Instagram reels short form, like the funny videos, but I did start doing it in like 2020 when I was stuck at home Yeah, and there weren't many agents that were doing it yep. at that time. And it was so, it was fun for me. It was fun to be creative, to be funny, to be, uh, you know, to add value from a, an education standpoint. Now it seems like everyone's doing it. Yes. And I've almost lost that creative me too. itch in the last couple months. Really it's been like since this year started, I'm like, Every agent's doing the same thing, yep. and it's not as fun for me yep. anymore. Um, so that's really cool that for you, like that's, yeah, you can have the biggest chiropractic practice here, and, and everyone in Austin's coming to you, but what's that step up and 
it seems like you've found that and i'm sure after as you're doing that you're going to think of okay what's the next challenge what can i move on to next and that's what a good business person does i i love that you said that too cuz uh recently a high school uh a high school guy just interviewed me about owning a business and he had really good questions which doesn't surprise me his dad's one of my mentors in business and one of his questions was uh, what's your best business advice that you could give to like a young entrepreneur to a 17, 18 year old entrepreneur? And my is similar along the lines to what you're saying is just kind of fall in love with the process. There's always going to be new challenges, new hurdles, mm. new goals. But I think if we develop a good process that works for us in work and life, then it just feels better. And there's our industries are always changing also because I've seen your growth too over the years, which has mm-hmm. been really cool to grow together and to see your, you know, TikTok videos on the news. I'm like, man, this guy's like, dude, this guy's killing it. Like sometimes like, damn, like yeah. I was friends with him before, before that happened. Yeah. yeah. So it's been simultaneously just as cool to see your growth in social media. I know you're really humble, but on TikTok, you know, I'm not shocked when I see your videos in the, million views or on youtube also and whenever we go out and get coffee somewhere you're not bragging on this but i'll brag on it for you people always stop and say hey you're the guy from youtube or hey i've seen your videos you're the real estate agent i think one time we were even at it remember armadillo den yes getting a drink and the bartender the (laughs) bartender was like you're i know who you are well I, i was going to close my tab yeah and i said grossman she was like i know i was like did that just happened to me. It doesn't have happen too often, but when I'm around people, like you're one of the magnets for it. So <laughs> it happens when famous. we hang out. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, this guy's you're doing doing good. But it's cool. It's cool to to have friends also that are growing simultaneously. And I think one of the challenges we face as business owners is always adapting and being innovative, right? Especially mm. when our markets get really saturated. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, um, where would someone find? The physical location of Lyser and Chiropractic, they want to come in and um, see the experience. Yeah, it's on South Lamar, right across, the, so two and a half miles south of downtown on South Lamar, right across the street from the famous Matt's El Rancho, hence the reason you call me Matt's El Cairo. Exactly. Um, yeah, yeah. He used to, Matt used to have uh, a whole, a fat head of himself okay. with a speech bubble. A big um, sticker. Big sticker on his front window, and it said, Matt's El Cairo. So that's where that came from. Um, social media and YouTube. Where can they find you? Yeah, Dr. Matt Delgado on Instagram. My business is Lifespring Cairo on Instagram and then on YouTube, Lifespring Chiropractic. And we've been on a little bit of a pause on the YouTube game, but we're going to kick it off again here this summer. We're currently compiling videos right now and trying to get our systems back in place as we mm. grow to figure out how YouTube fits in now to our practice. And we've actually learned and developed a lot of new techniques and a lot of new strategy things that we're excited to showcase on YouTube. Awesome. Go check them out on YouTube. Check them out in person. Hope you enjoy the experience. Thanks, Matt. Cool. Thanks.